This is the second of a series of three talks called Life in Earth. The first explained the main functions of soils and how the various creatures and characters created those cities under our feet. This is all about how those soils came to be developed and the final talk in the uh, series is all about bringing the soils up to date and what roles they may play in the future in the crisis which is challenging this planet of ours soils may have a vital role to play yeah, I'm, I'm now going to go on about how soils evolved how i believe soils evolved. when i was studying soils and counting half a million of these creatures i was amazed at how few were actually insects i kept looking at them we've just seen the springtails and the mites not many uh, insects the only insects that are in the soil are in the larval stages. Very, I can't think of any insects which spend all their life in the soil, other than perhaps some, some, some ants. And this is what got me thinking years and years ago. Was, well, well, how did the soils evolve? It's almost as if they evolved before insects evolved. So what I'm just going to ask, uh, uh, can you put up your hand? So I'm going to go on. To evolution because I don't think anybody's ever really tried to uh, work out how soils evolved. So can you put up your hands if you believe that soils are a living entity, that there's some, not quite an organism, an e ecosystem, yeah? Can I say, okay, yeah. And secondly, can you put up your hands if you believe in Darwinian evolution? Right. So the obvious question is if you believe they're a living entity, soil is a living entity and we believe in evolution, when did they evolve? And this is where I really get stuck because everybody just tends to think, you know, take the soil for granted that it's always been there. But clearly when we span off from the sun, you know, four and a half billion years ago, there was no soil. And a billion years ago, there's no sign of any soil. And it's like, it's almost as if we, we think it's arrived like manna from heaven that it just dropped down overnight one uh, or over a few years. And the, the scientists, the evolutionary biologists tend to sort of talk about the weathering of the rocks, the, the rocks weathered and some other soil formed. And you think, no, when rocks weather, they make clay, sand and silt and sludge. But that's not soil. Do you remember what I was saying about the key element of soil is these aggregates, the, the organic and the mineral matters together created by the soil creatures. So I thought, well, when did this happen? So this, as I say, this is the first time I've tried this out in public. And excuse me if I try to get the next 100 million years in, in 10 minutes. Look, some clues. One of the things is that soils are much the same the world over. Obviously, every yard is different from the next yard. Every foot, every they're all different, but they're the same and different all year, uh, all over the world. There's the mite, there are mites and the springtails and there's worms, there's nematodes, and not many insects. So I thought well, that must be a clue. And clearly. In, you can go back to half a billion years ago uh, and there weren't soils then either. There was rocks, there was lichens and there was bits of life. But if you remember in Cambrian times, they talk about this explosion of life, but it's an explosion of maritime life, marine life, not of soil life. So no, not much sign of soils there. What I've just said, all those creatures which I was used to count, the spring are more primitive in evolutionary terms than insects so that so it sort of puts it before insects evolved and after the cambrian time and the other one i always wondered about was does pangaea and that's what's going on behind me here does pangaea feature pangaea is the when the continents all came together as one and I thought, mm, I wonder if that's got anything to do with the fact that the soils are the same all the world over. And clearly this can't just happen overnight. It must, it must have taken years to evolve. So 
my theory, my theory is that it occurred over about 100 million years and it started about 400 million years ago. So we've got, at that time, we've got lichens, mosses, a few ferns and a few creatures on the surface. And that over the next 40 to 50 million years, there was a spread across the surface of the soil. There was a greening of the planet. And for the first, and this thing called Archaeopteris, this a sort of plant, a sort of very primitive plant, as we would call it today, was growing quite widely. And that's that picture there shows the roots of, of one of these plants. And you can see they're growing over the surface. They're not growing down, they're growing over the surface. And I think that was the time when roots started spreading across the surface of the soil, um, spreading roots, uh, and the fungi started working together to extend that spread, and the springtails were around to, to eat the bacteria and spread the fungal stuff. And that helped uh, move the, uh, the fungi around underground, because if you otherwise, how, how do spores move underground? Uh, you can't rely on the wind and the, there wasn't much water around so these creatures are important for moving the spores around. Then I, and this is the controversial bit I think, is I have the idea that there was a spurt in evolution at about 350 million years ago, 10 million years either side and this is when uh, these two continents were smashing into each other to make Pangaea. The, and the, the uh, geologists talk about a period of extinction at this time, and they're talking about the marine extinction and don't seem to be looking at the land. Um, and this is the period when the vascular plants, those plants with the water holding capacity, started to grow tall and grow more roots down. And I think it was this crashing together sort of brought cracks in the, the earth so that the roots could grow down, springtails could follow them, the fungi and the bacteria could follow them as well, so that those plants could then grow bigger because they got more root support. And any plant to grow has to have this soil support in order to grow. And I think that's when, when this happened. And the reason I point particularly at this period is in order for roots, stems, leaves to grow, you need lots of different elements, minerals. It's not just NPK stuff. You need about 20 essential elements we learned at, at uh, university needed to grow a plant. And you, you can't think of anywhere else you'd get 20 essential elements together at the same time. And you need them at the same time other than from volcanic ash. And the vol the, would, this was a period of massive volcanic activity as these continents collided. So you have the you have the elements now to grow the roots deeper, the stems to grow higher, the leaves to pr proliferate more, and the plants did. It's called differentiation to differentiate. So I think that happened relatively quickly, and that was when the aggregates started forming uh, because there was a lot more chewing and pooing going on. And the evidence for this is that at the end of this period, geological period, the Devonian period. They found they find lots of black shale in the sea and lots of volcanic ash. And you, you start and think, what does that tell us at that point? What does shale and ash at the bottom of the seas tell us? Well, clearly it's telling us that the plants are growing and that there's a lot of volcanic ash about and the two are together. And then you, you start to think, hang on. This must lead to the third period of soil evolution. And that's the decomposition. The one we take for granted was actually came after the other two periods. This is when, the, if you like, the soil learned how to break down plants because the black shale in the seas was a sign that the plants hadn't been broken down, hadn't decomposed. And this is the period they call the Carboniferous. This is where we find all the oil and coal. Again, indication that the soils hadn't, de the, sorry, the plants hadn't decomposed. They were just lying as, they just died and lied, laid as carbon, either at the bottom of seas or ponds or, or in the soil. And so it takes 40 to 50 
million years for creatures to move in and which they would obviously because this was a new ecological niche in order to feed on that dead plant matter and decompose it into humates that we now take for granted and so um imagine <laughs> you just think about the politics i just think about the politics today of it surrounds oil and coal still doesn't it and all about global warming and all that coal and oil comes from that period when these creatures weren't around all those little oribatids uh, weren't around and it's like those oribatids have uh, eaten uh, our resources that we have relied on for so many years so trillions of mites come in and when i talk about trillions there are something like 14 quadrillion mites and springtails in british soils i don't know who's counted them but that's like 14,000 trillion, an enormous amount, each with the bacteria in the guts, each breaking the lignin down. That's when it occurs. And so at about the period of about 300 million years, the soils looked much as they do today in terms of those three big functions. They had aggregates, they had springtails and mites, but there were no insects. And so I'll just pause there to see if anybody wants to throw any questions at me about whether that makes sense. And what it's done for me is all the evolution I now <laughs> read about, everybody else seems to be reading about evolution on the surface of the soils. It's called terrestrialization, how creatures adapted to life on Earth. But I actually, I want to develop the life in Earth because the soils didn't stop evolving 300 million years ago, they've been evolving ever since. And so, but I'll just pause there. This was the second talk in a series of three called Life in Earth. So that's to reflect, we're talking about the kingdom under our feet. The first explained the main three functions of soils and how the uh, characters and creatures in the soils have created this marvellous construct. The next one will look at the future of soils in terms of our planet, in terms of soils and sustainability, where they are likely to play a vital role if we are to maintain our civilization as we know it today.